when you're born and raised by a same-sex family, then that means that you tend to do well in school. Parental motivation should be higher for same-sex parents to have a child. The Netherlands is interesting because it's the first country to have legalized same-sex marriage. However, for the behavioral outcomes, we see no differences. So meaning that children with same-sex parents, they perform just as well. I am here with Denny Masvarkaj, an assistant professor of sociology at Utrecht University and an affiliated researcher at the University of Oxford and an author of two studies that I am really excited to get into today over school outcomes and behavioral outcomes of children raised by same-sex parents. I want to start on the school side, and this may actually hold true for both of the studies that we talk about, but I want to start where the paper itself kind of begins in addressing some of the problems with earlier studies on the matter. I think you did a really good job of laying out from the small convenience samples and the cross-sectional studies that can't show if this starts from birth or after a divorce for some of these children. Could you get into some of the issues this causes and, and the problems you see in the data and what your study did differently to avoid those? Yeah, so first of all, uh, thank you for inviting me. Uh, I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Um, yeah, so... Yeah, so we were looking at the previous literature and it turned out that most of the studies had very small samples. We are talking about about 50 um, children with uh, same-sex families. And this poses issues because these are indeed convenience samples, meaning that they are not random. It's not that you randomly picked uh, children from, from the population and you study them. It is more or less, let's say that I now post uh, um, a flyer on LinkedIn where I say I'm rec recruiting participants, but of course, only the people that I'm connected with and maybe that they are connected with will join my study. So these are not random people. These will be mostly higher educated people. Uh, so th th it's not representative of the population and this is an issue, it influences the results. And also another thing is that the studies are very small. And if the studies are very small, this means that we cannot really uh, correctly do statistics with these samples. So that actually means that the results are mostly biased towards zero, meaning no differences in uh, school outcomes or any outcomes. And um, so a bit of a, of a recent literature kind of tackled these issues using uh, census data from the US. And that meant that large samples were studied, thousands of children, but only at one point in time. And now you can imagine, you observe, what, uh, you observe a person at one specific point in time. That means that you don't know what happens before that. So for children of same-sex uh, same parents, this is kind of an issue because it is possible that these children are now living with same-sex parents at let's say age 15 or 18, but maybe they have lived with different sex parents their entire lives. So we can't really say that these people were born and raised by same sex parents. And of course, let's, let's think a bit like if, if these children were with different sex parents and then with same sex parents, something happened in between, namely the parents it, they mostly it mostly went through a parental uh, the children mostly went through a parental separation and we know that when people go to uh, through parental separation that on average not always but on average has negative effects yeah, so then I guess just to really highlight the difference that you can see there that you tackled in your study, do children with same-sex parents from birth perform better or worse? What are the differences you see compared to children that were with same-sex parents later on in life? Yeah, so then what we did is we tackled this using the entire population of the Netherlands. And the Netherlands is interesting because it's the first country to have legalized same-sex marriage. It's already in 2001, so we could observe basically children over 20 years. Although we observe the test scores after primary education, which is at age 12, and these are standardized test scores, meaning all the people in the Netherlands, all the children, they do the exact same test. There are some nuances here, but more or less it is like that. Mm -hmm. And then we observed their diploma attainment. So are they going to finish high school or not? And what, what, ha what we found is that um, when we separate the children who were raised and uh, who were born and raised by same-sex parents from birth, 
meaning they have always lived with same-sex parents, they actually tend to perform better in a school, both primary and secondary education, than children with different sex parents. And if we look at uh, the children with um, who, who were not raised by uh, same-sex parents from birth, but at a certain point in time, they came into a family with same-sex parents, they receive no differences, either some negative uh, differences or no differences, mostly actually no differences. But of course, there is this big confounder, we say, like the effect of divorce, which is driving uh, driving this or parental separation in any case. So what factors do we see playing a role in these differences? I'm sure, obviously, there's not like a concrete one you can point to, but what kind of like hypotheses or hypotheticals can you see coming? Is it socioeconomic status, more so on the family planning side? I know specifically in your study, you talk about the costly and time consuming nature for having children with these same sex couples leaving them as parents more likely to have higher levels of income and education, as well as being more, mo more motivated to take these additional steps as parents, how much of a role does this play on the kind of child outcomes we see? Yeah, so we did test this, namely we did control for the socioeconomic status of uh, the parents, mm -hmm. uh, meaning that we included, um, we say control variables, so we corrected for uh, children with uh, same-sex parents having a higher um, socioeconomic status, parental income, parental education, they live in smaller families, the parents are older. These are all uh, factors which may be influencing our results because if your parents have a higher income or a higher education, you are most likely to do well in school uh, too. That's what we see from the literature. Now, when we take these factors out, so we control for them, Still, the positive effect remains, but it does halve. So it goes, uh, fifty percent is re reduced of the effect, but it still it still remains positive. So there must be something else, which is driving uh, this result. What it could be, is now we we can't really know. We we speculate because these things are now unobservable to us. What we observe as is socioeconomic status, but not uh, not things that like parental motivation. We cannot observe this. And we know that parental motivation should be higher for same-sex parents to have a child. Why? Because ch having children for same-sex parents may be very costly. You go through uh, adoption procedures, which are financially costly, but also time-wise very costly, meaning you have to put a lot of effort, you have to put a lot of time in, in that. Uh, also, um, also the, for instance, IVF, etc. So... On average, it is likely that same-sex parents have a higher motivation, which may be uh, influencing our results. Another thing is that uh, children uh, of same-sex parents are planned, meaning it is unlikely that you uh, are randomly going to have a child uh, by accident, whereas for different sex families, this can happen um, more often. Uh, now, what we did do in our studies, we actually introduced these factors, although we do not observe them ourselves. It's a, it's a statistic, statistical model where we say, okay, uh, the factors that we do not observe, they have three times more influence than the factors that we do observe. And this is a lot. So, uh, because we do observe socioeconomic status, which is the main driver of, of uh, school outcomes. And then it turns out that only if we introduce um, unobserved factors to be three times as big as the observed factors, then we reduce the effect to zero. So the unobserved factors have to be really, really driving this by a lot uh, before we can reduce the uh, effect to zero. So we are not really sure what, what is uh, happening here. Um, and that is, of course, uh, something that we are working on. We are trying to figure out what can explain these results with, with new data and, and, uh, and uh, new studies. Yeah, so I want to jump over to the behavior side of this as well. Um, before we get directly into the results, just to clarify for everyone, what exactly is being measured for here when we talk about behaviors? Is it more psychologically like depression, anxiety, or is it more physical like tendencies towards maladaptive behaviors? Well, it's it's kind of both. Um, so what we measured is uh, we measured the emotional problems of the children. Um, basically, a question such as uh, my child is often unhappy or down. 
we also measured conduct problems. Um, for instance, if the child throws uh, temper uh, tantrums or has hot tempers. Um, also hyperactivity, which was measured with questions such as my child is restless, overly active, cannot sit still for long. Uh, then two, um, two factors which were measuring the interaction with peers, for instance, the antisocial scale, uh, which says something like, my child does not feel at ease in social situations or play or while play, playing with others. Mm -hmm. And also uh, the peer problem scale, which, uh, which is more with the question, my, my child gets picked on or bullied at school. So kind of both behavioral and emotional um, issues. So then looking directly at the results, were there any substantial differences that you found, whether it be, I guess, looking at it, you know, throughout all of them or, or more isolated in the different regards? Were there any statistical differences? No. So we found that uh, children with the same sex parents perform just as well as children with different sex parents on all of these. Um, but of course, this study is the, the previous study was the entire population of the Netherlands. Uh, so that is a very large study, and we can be quite certain that these are these results um, are are very robust. We say, but uh, for this study was quite kind of small. So it was, uh, uh, if I remember correctly, about seventy children. So quite a small study. So here we are less certain that uh, that these results hold. We are trying to replicate it with with bigger samples. So then I guess, uh, were there any, in terms of like factors that could play into this, were there any differences in the outcomes for behaviorally, or was it kind of the same with how we discussed with the school outcomes? No, pretty much the same as we discussed. Well, not really the same, because in the school outcomes, they were performing better. Mm. And even if we reduce the socioeconomic status, they, they still perform better. Uh, however, for the behavioral outcomes, we see no differences. So meaning that children with same-sex parents, they perform just as well as children with different sex parents, but also not better. So not worse, but also not better. They just perform the same. No statistical differences. So to me, it's always kind of seemed like a no-brainer that the better socioeconomic position that you're in when you have a kid, the more advantages that kid will be in. And a lot of your studies point to same-sex couples as parents having a likely higher hood of having higher income, education. I know one of your studies said you're likely to have less kids in the home with same-sex couple parents. It makes me wonder where the kind of contention came from aside from just outright prejudice. I do want to end with this, however. I always like to ask people who have done Extensive, extensive research into a field or a topic, what was the most shocking or maybe mind-blowing unknown revelation that you found during your research? Well, for me, the I, I think for most people, the most mind-blowing mind from, from my research was that um, you actually find better, uh, better results for same-sex parents. Um, many expected either worse which was seen in previous literature, or no differences, which was also seen in previous literature. But like I said, these previous studies, they could not look over time and did not have large samples. And once we corrected them, it turns out that they actually perform better. And also that the duration matters. How long you are in a same-sex uh, family uh, seems to be driving the results. So when you're born and raised by a same-sex family, then that means that you tend to do well in school. What the explanation is at this point, we know part of it is a socioeconomic status. Uh, currently, the people that are raising children as same-sex uh, parents, they are, have a higher socioeconomic status, likely also higher motivation. But it also seems that something is something else is driving it, and we, we do want to tr uh, try to find out what that is. Awesome. Yeah. Thank you for again for coming on and spreading uh, the research and the information that you have in this regard. I always like to give people a chance before we wrap up. If there's any point maybe we didn't get to, if there if you have a project or something you want to shout out, the floor is yours if you want it to shout out anything. Yeah. So actually, I do have something, namely, um, yeah, so this research about school outcomes, it was joint work with um, with uh, Sophie Cabus and Christophe de Witte from uh, KU Leuven. And uh, we, after this project, we hired the PhD student, Silvia Palmaccio. And together with Christophe de Witte, we continued to see what is happening on the labor market. Uh, meaning, 
okay, they perform well in school, but does that translate to labor market outcomes? Do they have higher earnings? Do they uh, find more employment? And what we found is, I believe, quite interesting, and that is that uh, children with uh, who, who were born with uh, same-sex uh, parents, they um, tend to choose more part-time jobs and also more jobs which uh, are dominated by the opposite uh, opposite sex. So boys, especially boys, tend to choose for occupations which um, which are mainly um, mainly occupied by by uh, by women, uh, which is quite interesting as it shows that there there may be um, yeah there may be preferences which are uh, which are uh, um, playing a role here on the labor market outcomes and that's quite uh, quite novel I think. Awesome. And then I guess just uh, quickly uh, with the wages in terms of that, were were you seeing higher wages, lower wages? What, what was it? In that well, given that they're choosing for more part time jobs and and, uh, and uh, occupations that are more mostly dominated uh, by uh, women, we saw uh, lower wages um, uh, on the labor market. But of course, this does not mean that this is bad. It mm-hmm. simply means that uh, it. it it may be bad. We don't know. But what is happening? What what may also be happening is that they are simply choosing more in line with what they want. Uh, we in in that case we uh, so given that we don't observe differences in other social outcomes, I get, I I would say that this is not uh, necessarily bad. Yeah, to everyone working sixty hours a week, making you know as much as you can for the man, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So thank you again for the wonderful conversation, and I hope you enjoy the rest of your day. Yeah, thanks a lot. Awesome. See ya.